Right, so today we're going to be looking at finding the formula for the area of a sector and then we're going to look at some examples using it. So firstly, what is a sector? This relates to circles, so a sector is kind of just a slice of a circle. So if this is like a cake, this is just a slice of a cake. So we just cut these two radii and then the sector, we want to find the area of this whole region. And so we need a formula in terms of the angle theta and the radius r. So how are we going to do this? First off, think of the formula for the whole area of a circle. And we know this, so if I just write area of a circle, this is equal to pi times the radius squared. That's just a general formula for any circle. And so a way that we can find the area of this sector is thinking about the ratio that this takes up of the whole circle. And this is going to be given by the ratio of the angle to a full revolution. So we're going to do this in radians and degrees, and we're going to see which one's nicer. So first off, let's start off with um, degrees, because we're more familiar with that. So the area, this is the quantity we're trying to find. This, as we said, it says pi times r squared, the whole area of the whole circle. And we need to multiply this by the ratio that it takes up of the circle. So it's going to be the angle divided by full revolution, which in degrees is 360 degrees. So this formula is in degrees. It's not particularly nice because we still have pi's and we still have uh, 360. So let's look at radians instead. Um, and it's going to be essentially the same formula. So we take pi times r squared. And now we multiply it by the angle. But we divide it by the total revolution in radians. So this in radians, instead of 360 degrees, it's 2 pi radians. And this is really nice because the pi's are going to cancel out. And this is going to give us a really nice formula. So the area is equal to a half times theta times r squared. And this formula is in radians. So let's just look at an example of using this formula. Instead of just plugging in numbers theta and r, we're going to think about it slightly differently. If instead that we're given the area, so if we say this is 28.9 centimeters squared, and we're also given the angle theta equals 0 0.8 radians, Let's try and find out the radius of the circle, because we're given these two bits of information. There's only going to be one missing bit of information, so we can find this. So if we just plug it into this formula, we get 28.9. This equals a half times 0 0.8 times r squared. And so we can rearrange for r squared. And this would come out as, if you use a calculator or just do the maths, this is 72.25. And then we can take the square root to give us the radius, which this comes out very conveniently. Um, this is 8.5 centimeters. So this is just a little example of using this formula to find some of the missing quantities. So now I'm going to do one more example. It's going to be a bit harder. Um, I'm just going to wipe off the board and then we'll look at it. OK, so now we're going to look at one more example. And we're going to use this formula, but it's going to be a bit trickier. So I'm just going to draw out the diagram. It's going to be a sector of a circle. So it's going to be something like this. But so the information we're given is that the radius of the sector is 55 centimeters. And then this is going to be an angle theta, which we don't know. And the question is to find the area. But obviously, we need some more information. So let's say this is the arc length. We're going to be given not the arc length, but we're going to be given the perimeter. So the perimeter of this um, area, of this shape, is going to be uh, it's going to come out to be 176 centimeters. So from this information, we need to work out firstly the angle and then the area of this sector. So this is a bit tricky because we're dealing with lots of formula. So first, let's think about the perimeter. Let's try and find an equation for this. So the perimeter is going to be the length of all the sides. So we've got two of these radii. So it's going to be 2 times 55 plus this arc length, so plus L, which we don't know yet. But we do know what the perimeter is, so we can actually work out what L must be. So if we just set this equal to 176, then we can rearrange for L. So L is going to be 176 minus 2 times 55, which is 110. So this comes out to be 66. So that's what the arc length is. And now we need to remember the formula for the arc length. We actually did this in a previous video. But I'll just remind you, it's going to be given Again, in terms of theta and r, this is like this length here. The arc length, I just sketch it on, arc length is given by just theta times r. And since we know what the radius is, we can actually use this to work out the angle. 
So if we just set this equal to theta times 55, we can actually work out what theta is. I'm just gonna rearrange this equation. So theta equals 55, oh no, not 55, sorry, <laughs> 66, 66 divided by 55. And now these are both multiples of 11, so this simplifies six over five, which is the same as 1.2 radians. So now we have the radius, we have the angle, we can actually work out the area of a uh, sector. So we're gonna use this formula now. And this is the question to work out the area. So the area is gonna come out to be a half times the angle, which is 1.2, times uh, the radius squared, so times 55 squared. And if you put this into a calculator, this is going to come out as 115 uh, units. So we're working in centimeters here. Actually, uh, units squared, because this is an area, so this is actually centimeters squared. So this is the area of this sector. So it's really good to get familiar with these formula because there's all types of variations of using these formulas. There's all types of geometry problems where you're given very crazy looking shapes and uh, regions and you just need to work out the areas just using this formula. So I hope you understand this a bit better now.